In this video, I am going to explain muscles of shoulder girdle. There are not many shoulder girdle muscles. However, these muscles are very important for scapular movement and breathing. Why? Because many of these muscles attach to rib cage. Okay, I am going to explain three muscles from this picture. First one is this one. This is pec minor, pectoris minor. Pectoris minor. You know there is pectoris major, pec major, above pec minor. If you dissect pec major, pec minor shows up. This muscle attaches to rib cage and coracoid process. As I said, uh, shoulder guard muscles attached to rib, scapula, or spines. So, when this muscle gets tight, that of course inhibits movement of scapula, and also that inhibits movement of rib cage. What happens when movement of rib cage is inhibited? Breathing can be inhibited, right? So, this is very, very interesting muscle. When pec minor gets tight, it inhibits movement of scapula plus breathing. This muscle is very important muscle for breathing and scapula movement. Pec minor. Next one is this one. This tiny, thin muscle. This is subclavius. subclavius that attaches to first rib to clavicle. This muscle is not very big bone mover if I have to say. This is very tiny muscle. This lowers down clavicle or elevate first rib but not that big movement. However, this muscle is important for myofascial connection and nervous tissue connection. I am not going to too much detail about uh, myofascial and neural connection, just for reminder. Subclavius, very important for myofascial connection and neural connection. Okay. Next one is this one, this kind of a zigzag muscle. This is serratus anterior. Serratus anterior that attaches to rib cage to scapula. This muscle is freaking important for scapula stability. Of course, for mobility, but I think this is important for stability. When this muscle gets tight or weakened, that affects movement of scapula plus movement of rib cage. Why? Because it attaches to rib cage. This is freaking important. Actually, pec minor and serratus anterior, it kind of cooperate each other. When pec minor gets tight, serratus anterior tends to get tight. This is just my personal experience. So this is not like a scientific proved logic. You know, this is just my personal opinion. When pec minor gets tight, serratus anterior tends to get tight. When serratus anterior gets tight, pec minor tends to get tight. So these two muscles are important for scapular movement and rib cage movement, breathing. Now, let me go to next picture. Next one is this big muscle. By the way, this is posterior view. This is trapezius. Trapezius attaches to scapula and spines. Cervical spines to thoracic spines. As I said, shoulder guard muscles attach to scapula, rib cage, and spines. Okay, so when trapezius gets tight, it keeps scapular position up or medial. Okay, what happens when 
scapula is fixed on the superior position that may tighten up trapezius this area. Yep, you know this. This muscle can lead to frozen shoulder or tight shoulder this area. You know this, right? So trapezius, very important for scapular movement and tight shoulder, right here. Of course, when trapezius gets tight, that can affect movement of spines and occiput. Yep, this is also important thing, but I'm not going to too much detail about uh, biomechanics of joint and muscles. Simple thing is, trapezius can make tight shoulder around here. Now let's go to deeper layer of posterior part. So this is still a posterior view. You see serratus anterior here. I explain three muscles. These two muscles. Sometimes these two muscles together it is called rhomboid. This part is rhomboid major. Okay, the rhomboid major because it's bigger. This part is rhomboid minor. It doesn't matter if you combine these two muscles as rhomboid or you can separate rhomboid major or rhomboid minor that makes sense uh, however you prefer. I prefer uh, saying rhomboid. It doesn't matter ear preference. So this muscle is also important. Why? Because when this muscle gets tight, that brings scapula medially, stabilized to medially. Rhomboid and serratus anterior is kind of relationship of antagonist. Antagonist means each muscle has completely opposite function. So when, let's say, serratus anterior is working too hard, now rhomboid is stretched, let's say it's too weak, minus, too weak. When rhomboid is working too much, now serratus anterior is stretched, pulled, and can't work very well. So this is like an yin-yang relationship, plus-minus relationship. This is important, right? Next one, last one is this one. This is levator scapula. Levator scapula. As the name of muscle indicates, this can elevate scapula. Same as trapezius. When levator scapula gets tight, that can create tightness around this area. Imagine there is trapezius. And deep to trapezius, there is levator scapula. This is just my opinion. When levator scapula and trapezius get tight together now that can create shoulder tightness even more because these functions are kind of similar elevation of scapula when these two muscles get tight that can create very very tight shoulder see shoulder guard muscles are very important for scapula scapula movement scapula stability so when these muscles are not working very properly, that can lead tightness of scapula. Plus, these muscles attached to spines or ribcage that can affect movement of spines or breathing. If you liked today's video, please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. See you next video.